Hi there. My name is Clara, and I'm here to talk to you about functional programming and parallelization and spatial point pattern analysis. So my project is on the geospatial analysis of Airbnb in Singapore, and the data is taken from inside Airbnb um, from September 2020. Um, so for this project, I'm trying to determine if Airbnb listings are clustered in Singapore and where they occur using with these k-function test, and we use it to split by room type and the region type. Um, those are the packages that we use, and I want to really talk a little bit more about how we parallelize the, um, the k-test um, for faster, um, for larger data sets. So how does the k-test work? SPATSTAT provides the function ks to compute an m bias estimate of kt. And then basically it runs a series of Monte Carlo simulations using the envelope function and compares it to the theoretical value. Now, if they are completely spatially random, um, meaning there's no relation to each other, um, it will fall within the envelope values. Um, of course, we reject that null hypothesis when the simulated values fall higher than the upper bounds of the theoretical values, and that means that they're clustered, or if they're competitive processes, this simulated values will fall lower than the lower bound of the theoretical, the theoretical values, and this is what it looks like, right? So in those two graphs that are shown, this shows signs of clustering, and for the graph on the bottom right, it shows complete spatial randomness because the, the, uh, the simulated values are within the envelope. Now, issues are, it starts being computationally intensive for large data sets or data with non-uniform observation windows. Um, additionally, there's no inbuilt parallelization methods in SPATSTAT. That means you've got to use your own way of parallelization. And it's also dependent on OS. Functions such as MacApply from the base parallel package works for Mac and Linux, but not for Windows. So what we did was obviously split the analysis to make it less computationally intensive and also create functions that benefit from functional programming, such as an envelope function and the plotting function. So I wanted to go deeper into the parallelization because I realized that there were not many um, assets or things around this area. And what we do in this case is to parallelize the Monte Carlo simulations, splitting the number of simulations between the different cores and then combining the results back together. So first of all, we set up the clusters. The code here below um, shows you how that is done. This is obviously calling all the libraries of do parallel and um, for each. And next we need to set up and distribute objects to each of those clusters um, so that they can read and obviously run the functions on those clusters. Um, we use 100 simulations exporting a, a store of PPP objects, um, the number of clusters and number of simulations required, and then of, obviously passing spat, stat, and tidyverse through to the different six different clusters. The three are only shown here. And what then we need to do is to set up the helper functions um, for the parallelization. So first we need a function to replicate the PPP object for each core in use. And that's this one here. And the next one is to look at running an envelope simulation for one PPP object. And this results in a list of envelopes. So basically it's saying we're going to replicate the PPP object across all the clusters. And for each of these uh, objects in the clusters, do in parallel, and we set the seed so that we can replicate this, run the envelope function for each of those things using spatstats ks function, um, how many simulations, which is the number of simulations divided by number of clusters, uh, rounded up to the nearest number. And then of course, we make sure that we are able to save it into envelope functions. And then finally, it's a function to pull the envelope sim simulation results into one envelope. And we use this by calling do call pool of, um, of the function uh, x. And we put them all together into one um, main function, which if we just parse through the PPP object with the region uh, name and a different split by different room types, it will be able to do that um, for all of them. So, once we're done, obviously run the function and then stop the clusters um, once you're completely done with that. What's happened is that we find that parallelization is four times faster than running, obviously, the, uh, the simulations in serial, uh, serially. 
Um, we use micro benchmark and ran the simulation 10 times for each um, different uh, region and expression. And we find, and these are the results that you can see here. Um, an alternative for the k-test is to use k-test SFFT function. And this is um, basically an alternative function that analyzes large pattern of points. It discretizes the point pattern onto a rectangular raster and applies fast Fourier transform techniques to estimate the k-function. In essence, it kind of does things in parallel by splitting them pairwise and then aggregating them again. Of course, this only applies to the k-function test. So hopefully the last few slides were not a complete waste of your time. Um, and if you needed to run it on different other functions, that's kind of what you would need to do um, in terms of uh, how you would run the parallelization. So uh, this chart just shows the difference between running the fast Fourier transform and a normal uh, k-test on the central, private, uh, central region private rooms. So the main takeaways from here are one, learn parallelization so you can apply it to your problems and then make your computation a lot faster. Um, two, um, I guess, learn how to set up a VM with better hardware specs. And that's what I had to do in, for the second half of my project on geogra geographically weighted regression. Um, and three, RTFM, that might actually be a function written specifically for your problem. Um, you don't know till you've gone through it. So that's basically it. Thank you very much. And if you want to see the code for some of those things, you can be you can find that in the RPUBs or go to the project page where I've put um, most of the data wrangling and all the other parts of my project in there. Thank you.